Welcome to another enlightening episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm Will. And I'm Karen. And today we have the pleasure of diving deeper into the mystical realms of intuition, ancient wisdom, and spiritual mysteries with our incredible guest, Shanna Vavra. Shanna is no ordinary individual. She is an intuitive. She's a Reiki master teacher and the driving force behind the renowned Sense of Soul podcast. Throughout her life's journey, Shanna has fearlessly followed her inner compass, leading her to explore the uncharted territories of her ancestral roots and unravel the enigmatic teachings hidden within Gnostic gospels and age-old scriptures. With over two decades of experience in coaching roles, Shanna's passion for unveiling obscured histories and breathing life into once hidden narratives has become her life's purpose. Through her podcast, Sense of Soul, she engages in real, authentic, and conscious conversations with kindred spirits from all walks of life, light workers, motivational speakers, and authors who share their wisdom and inspire authentic living. Now, her podcast's resounding success speaks for itself. It's ranked in the top 1% of all podcasts on Listen Notes, and it is crowned as the number one top spiritual awakening podcast by Feedspot's esteemed list of 40 best spiritual awakening podcasts to follow in 23. With over a million downloads and an extensive library of 400 episodes, the Sense of Soul podcast has touched the lives of countless individuals, guiding them on their own unique journeys towards discovering their true sense of soul. Shanna, thank you so much for being on the show. We're excited to talk to you today. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. That was quite the intro. Well, you know, we try to do things that make people go, who's that? Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> and the audience go, how did they get them on their show? Right, right. That's the most important thing is how to get them on their show. <laughs> what do they have on her? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I also, I neglected to mention that Shanna and her podcast, Sense of Soul, is a part of the wonderful ethereal podcast network that we are also part of. And we're thrilled to have you on yeah. there. So. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be among so many amazing names and, you know, all with the same purpose. And I love it so much. I love all you guys so much. Well, thank you. We, we love you right back. Now, let's just dive right into it. Can you share how you discovered your own sense of soul and what led you to embark on this whole spiritual journey thing? Yeah. I mean, I never saw it coming. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> not many people do. <laughs> no. You know, I think I was trying to fit in that condition box, you know, and I was doing pretty well. I was, mm -hmm. you know, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, making sure my kids were good so that I looked good. We went to church every Sunday, trying to live the dream in my cookie cutter house. But I think it was so overwhelming to do so that I was losing myself. And, you know, that conditioned box is painful. It turned into mm -hmm. all kinds of diagnoses like fibromyalgia, ADHD, um, anxiety forever. And I was on all of these medications. I mean, I was so numbed out. And mm. I mean, the kids would be on the roof and I'd be like, hey, guys, you should probably get down. <laughs> you know, I mean, just <laughs> out of it. Mm. And I've always been such an emotional person. And I was at the point mm. where I couldn't even cry. Wow. Yeah. I was just numb. Yeah. And so I remember, I, and my memory was going. That was a weird thing because I've always had a really good memory. And mm -hmm. I remember going to my doctor and saying, you know, something ain't right. I mean, I literally cannot remember the beginning of my day. And there's something going on here. I was like, just take me off all these drugs and I'll just go to a, like a shrink. Okay. <laughs> you know, and so I did. And it was like the best thing that ever happened because, you know, they were bringing awareness to, there were other ways that maybe I could be handling my stress besides just numbing them and covering them up. And so one lady who diagnosed me with ADHD also suggested in the same session that I should go to a mindfulness class. And I'm like, lady, you just told me my mind had no problems being full. Like, what are we talking about here? And so I did. And it was in that moment in that mindfulness class. I mean, I really sucked at it. I mean, first of all, I'll just say that I, I, I did not accomplish my business we, in that class. All, usually we all do, right, when we first get started. So oh, 
I didn't even know there were classes for that. I thought you just had to be mindful. Yeah. Like, what, what do they teach you? Like, how? What? Well, in, in England, you have to mind the gap. Does that, does that <laughs> work? Actually, it was very interesting. You know, it was like, feel the paper, you know, it was all these things. And it, it actually, the teacher, the leader of the class had made like a paper airplane. And all I'm thinking was, oh, yeah, Trevor got in trouble for that paper airplane at school last week. And then I'm like, I should be at home. I should be with my kids. Oh, my God. He's telling me to breathe. I can't even breathe. I don't know how to breathe. I suck at this. And I'm like looking around and I'm like, oh, my God, everyone's better than, you know, me at this. And I started to panic and I started to listen. And I just was so mean to myself. I mean, I was talking some mad crap. And that was the moment. I didn't even know there was this other voice. And you're something to listen to this voice that was really talking crap to me. I would never talk to a stranger the way I was talking to myself. And that really was the moment. So then when you realized that something was wrong, what was what did you turn to first? Because you, you do a lot of things. You're intuitive. You're a Reiki master teacher. You're, you, you've you done ancestral studies. I mean, you, you've done a lot. So what was your first yeah. step in the world of the, uh, of the metaphysical? Well, you know, because I was working with my doctor, you know, to get over the stress, I had saw that they had some sort of study. It was like a nighttime meditation study. And I was like, all right, maybe I'll try something like this. You know, as long as it's not too woo-woo, you know, I don't want to go to hell for meditating. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up Catholic, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was so funny because I was so excited about this. And then when they they do like this online kind of quiz that you they ask you all these questions. And at the end, they said I was too stressed out for their study, but that I was doing all the good things like mindfulness and seeing a shrink and all these things. But I didn't qualify, but I was so excited. So I was like, screw this. I'll make my own. <laughs> that, wow, that's surprising that you didn't qualify. Yeah. So you didn't. So you were too stressed for a stress release study that doesn't make a whole lot of sense i know and, and I, then that's stressful when they tell you that I'm like oh god <laughs> it's I'm really bad can you imagine <laughs> yes i felt so defeated but i was like no i was really looking forward to this so i'm going to create my own and back then i don't even know if they had a youtube so i mean i was like really searching for stuff and mm. but i did find some sort of nighttime meditation and sure enough it was working i was sleeping better than ever I was listening to that voice more than ever. And just my awareness became super heightened. And I liked the space. I really did. And I was crocheting at the time. I had learned how to crochet. I think it was like at the beginning of my 30s, like all of these new talents came to me. It, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was a walk-in. You hear those things? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I learned how to crochet. I mean, I learned how to sew. In fact, it was very interesting I would sit there and sew, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing it. And I would call mm -hmm. the bobbin a bobber. And I did for like a <laughs> year before my partner was like, you know, that's not a bobber. And I was like, <laughs> well, I think it is. And, and he's like, no, that's when you fish, you use a bobber. <laughs> <laughs> right. mm -hmm. but, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's interesting, though. It is really interesting how... During that time where I was making space for myself, all of a sudden I became real super creative, which I think happens when you're on that vibe. Creativity is part of it. But it was hilarious I, because I was making these rag rugs and mm -hmm. you start like in the inside and before you know it, you're like in, on this rug and it's huge around you. And I would play this chanting music that I found on YouTube. And believe me, the only reason why I played this chant, because it said, God is love, love is God. So I thought I was like, okay, but come to find out, it's like one of the most powerful Hindu chants, like the most ancient, powerful chant. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so I tricked myself. And there's something, you know, you're talking about these new talents and being creative. There's something that's so like meditative about working with your hands. Like when I cook and I have to chop a lot of stuff, I just like go into the zone. And I always think, well, maybe in a past life I was a factory worker or <laughs> someone that just kind of did that because it's such like a comfortable place for me to be doing things with my hands because you're just kind of, you're just there in the yeah. moment. You're focusing on what you're doing. You're not, you know, stressed about anything. It's so true. Right. I have God. But you know, at that time also, I had four kids. I had two in high school, 
one child who's on the spectrum and a newborn. So, I mean, anyone would be stressed. And I just lost my dad. I lost one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And it was really crazy. And I do remember there was this one moment in the bath. This is really interesting. I'm going to share a very intimate moment. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. You know, I'm in the bathtub and I'm looking and in the corner, there's like this bottle. And it's a philosophy bottle. That was the brand name of this bubble bath. Mm -hmm. And it had been like in the corner of the bubble bath forever. Like if you tried to pick it up, it was like stuck like to the tub. <laughs> but I look at it and I see it's called Begin Again. And I don't think they have this one anymore, but I wish they did because it was so beautiful. But I looked at it closer and, you know, have you, I'm starting to be more mindful of things, right? But I'd never seen mm -hmm. this bubble bath or read it ever. And I'm reading it and it's the most beautiful thing ever. It says something like, you know, you can climb to the highest mountain to find yourself at the bottom of a new one, begin again. You know, you can, you crossed all your I's, but you forgot to dot your T's or dot your I's, forgot to cross your T's, begin again, <laughs> right? I mean, it was just all that. And that was such a big moment for me because I just cried. It was so beautiful. Like I really became mindful just of everything around me. And really that's what, that's what it did. And how were you then able to growing up Catholic and kind of with all the stress and, you know, you've got all these kids and just so much time to learn to crochet and everything. But how were you able to be accepting of the woo, of Reiki, of all of this? Right. Yeah. I think it was actually the magic question that I asked myself that I, I love to ask people that I work with, too, is how much of what you believe have you been told to believe? And of that, how much have you experienced to be true for yourself? Wow, that's and, a great question. Yeah. And I could honestly say the only thing that I felt like I had really experienced was like love, love for like my children. But everything else, like my belief system, who I wanted to be, what I went to school for, what I was work, you know, the work I was doing, all of that, where I was living, everything was really just based off of what everyone else told me that I should be and believe in. And so from no. that moment, I was seeking experience. Interesting. But I heard this quote somewhere just a couple of days ago, and I thought, I don't, I don't know where this is coming from or why, why I'm hearing this, but now it all makes sense. It says, I don't know what the truth is, but I know what love feels like. And I follow that every single day. That's wow. like perfection right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I to just totally. Yeah. So that's it. My whole body just tingled. I have goosebumps, right? It's like mm -hmm. I experienced what you said. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so with all the strife and the conflict and all that kind of stuff and, and what is the truth, what's real, what's not, what really at the end of it all, the mo I mean, just, you know what love is. Just, just do that. Just do that. And you'll, you'll be okay. Oh. It is. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you say, you know what love is, but I think it can be confusing to some people because I think they interpret it as, as a relationship love or a mother child love. You know, love is so much more than, that. Mm. and it's not even loving your neighbor. It's just so much more. It's this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of just peace and joy and acceptance yeah. and tolerance yeah. and yeah, and I think that when you meditate, to Shannon's point, when you meditate, I think you get to a point where you realize that you are nothing but love. And I think as, as long as you hang on to that feeling moving forward on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what makes it so mm -hmm. great. That's you know, what the sense of soul is, right? I mean, you're literally yep. sensing that love. You're experiencing yeah. it. And that's what I was seeking. I wanted truth. And I became like a die-hard truth seeker in that moment. And I wanted right. to experience truth. And that kind of started with my ancestral journey for sure. There's so much healing through that. But the, I think the one thing that blew me away the most in my whole entire ancestry journey was, though, is that no matter which lineage I looked at, they were all forced in some way to their religion. Huh. Um, yes. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. So I had an ancestor who was on one of those first five boats that came from France to New Orleans. Um, in it was like 17 something, early 1700s. And he was actually a German. And he um, was a witness to those before you got on the boat, you were to get baptized before you got on the boat, if you weren't already. And then, of oh. course, that was in the Black Code 
Um, so all slaves had to be baptized and they got Sundays off. And um, then you had um, the Cajun people that were relocated from uh, Canada down to New Orleans or down to Louisiana as well. And I had a great shaman who is known as the apostate because he was forced, him and his tribe were forced to be Christians. They gave him Christian names and yeah. So, and then of course my dad had Jewish in him. And so there was that whole cover up and I never knew anything about mm -hmm. that. Um, but they were all very, very Catholic. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about teachings and learning since we're on the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you've had over 400 episodes on your show, right? You have dove into every imaginable modality, spiritual thought process, the whole deal. Yeah. So I'm just going to assume that you have all the answers and we're about <laughs> to learn uh, what they all are. The floor is yours, well, Shanna. <laughs> and go. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm definitely a teacher. I mean, not, I, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student for life, for sure. But mm -hmm. what I found was, is of course, you know, you're learning every every episode from these amazing people. I'm sure you guys can absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, contest to that. I mean, it's pretty remarkable to be able to talk to some of the amazing people we're talking to. And yeah. You know, I've learned so much. And of course, there's so many different modalities, you know, like you were saying, and I love to learn about all of them. I really do. But what I found was that, like when I started Reiki, I was really into it. And I still do. I teach it. I think it's a great foundation for energy. But I was putting myself back in another box. <laughs> so I always, I like to teach Reiki, but I always say like, make it your own. So that was another mm -hmm. thing that I really truly had to learn throughout this journey is. You know, there's many ideas to different things, many, you know, different practices. But when it comes down to it, I think that once you're out of that box, it's harder to get back in it. And so mm. I really, you know, follow, like you said at the very beginning, my inner compass. I mean, I really, really trust my discernment. Um, even with my Sophia journey. So I've been on this journey studying the Gnostic Gospels and the Gnostic Sophia. And I had to use discernment throughout that entire time because there's so much outside opinions about different things. And I just shut it all out because I wanted to experience mm -hmm. it and I wanted to learn it for myself. And however I did, I wanted to to be authentic. Now, for those that don't, aren't, maybe aren't familiar with the Gnostic scriptures or Sophia, in a nutshell, can you nutshell yeah. it for us? What is that? Yeah, in a nutshell. So, um so the Nag Hammadi was found, well, so there's lots of different Gnostic texts, but there was a huge library of them found like in the 1950s, 1940s, 50s, somewhere around there. And so there was also many found like in the 1700s as well. So these are very old scriptures that were found that are the gospels of Jesus's disciples. So the only ones that we know that made the cut were Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Peter wrote most of them, which Peter didn't even know Jesus. But you have all of these other ones that, you know, um, you, people are more familiar with. I mean, Judas, James, Thomas, Mary Magdalene, right? There's hundreds mm -hmm. of them. And so I started to explore. I happened to come across one of them one day. I think it was the book of Thomas, which is the most beautiful gospels ever, ever, which is also, I think, one of the most popular um, gospels where He's only quoting Jesus. So it's not like he's telling the stories. He's quoting him, which you do hear many of the same quotes that you do find in the New Testament. But there is, these are kind of untouched. They're like virgin gospels <laughs> because they haven't, you know, been touched by the hierarchy or the church and all of mm -hmm. these things. And they've only been right. translated only a few times. So they're more raw. Mm -hmm. And you get to know this almost like, Zen master Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I've liked that Zen master yeah. Jesus. And so he's Karen, like a DJ. Like this. There is a lot of feminine energy in this. So the nice. there's many, many, many. That's why they didn't women. make that. Mm, yes, that's no. I really do think so. Is part of it. So there's a lot. Yeah. There were many disciples that were women, and they were mm -hmm. highly regarded, especially Mary Magdalene, and. There's also the mention of a feminine goddess or like a feminine energy of God, which is Sophia, which in Greek just means wisdom. 
She's mentioned in the Bible. She's also mentioned in the Catholic canon, um, in the Book of Wisdom, which is after her. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, she was hidden, you know, buried. And now she is been birthed from earth and she's rising. <laughs> and hopefully, if anyone ever listens to this or my podcast, they'll learn a little bit more about, you know, who she is. Wow. It, it's such a shame that so much of this feminine energy isn't really in the, the Bible that most people read because it, there's such a difference between the masculine and the feminine. And, and in my experience, I think the feminine energy tends to be so much more en encompassing of everything. Yeah. So I think it would really have kind of given an extra something to the balance. Bible. Balance. Balance. Yeah. yeah. Balance. Yeah. Balance. yeah. Probably balance. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. yeah. yeah. yeah so well, sure. we need to take a quick break before we get, uh, too, for, too much further down this rabbit hole. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to keep talking to Shanna. We're going to dive a little deeper into her Sense of Soul podcast and some of the lear learnings that she's gotten from the interviews that she's done. And we'll dive a little bit more into her Gnostic research and things like that. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Skeptic Metaphysicians. We are with Shanna Vavra, who is the brains behind the Sense of Soul podcast or with over a million downloads and 400 plus episodes uh, recorded and released. We are thrilled to have her with us to talk all things metaphysics, spirituality. Uh, I got to put this on the table because everybody knows and including you how jealous I am of you right? because you have had not just once, but twice. You've had the honor, the privilege, the, the, the luck to have Neil Donald Walsh on your show. <laughs> how in the world, how was oh he? God. Like, how amazing must that have been to have him on your show? Oh, my God. I love him. I mean, I do. I adore him so much. And I do feel like we have a connection. You know, I definitely feel like there is something, you know, that is connecting us on, on just that love of, of seeking something and, and overcoming, you know, challenges and and looking for, you know, the world to, you know, he has the same passion, actually the same as you guys do. We want to see the world kind of find their light within, you know, them rather than seeking it outside of themselves and, and learning to, you know, climb onto that top of the mountain. And, and even if you're coming to a brand new mountain, like know that you got stronger, you know, mm -hmm. and just keep going. And, I just, he's so inspiring. And guess what? You guys are going to die. Guess what happened? He's going to write the forward of my book. Get out of town. Wow, congratulations. That's amazing. That is awesome. Right. And we haven't even touched on the fact that you're writing a book. And so, I mean. And congratulations on that too. Right. Holy cow. Right. So, so first, Neil Donald mm -hmm. Walsh, for those who are uninitiated, he is the, really the channeler, right? The author, I don't know, I guess best best way to put it of conversations with god the entire series and it is my bible it is my mm -hmm. it is the the series of books that i have followed through my entire dark night of the of the soul periods of time and that's not just singular but plural and to have him write the foreword for your book automatically puts it in a place <laughs> where very few books had the honor of so how did you okay how much yeah. money did it cost you you guys, <laughs> first of all, it, it's actually in my episode with him, this last, the more recent episode. So I'm telling him that I received this message from, I felt like it was a feminine energy, which I must say, my whole journey with the Gnostic Gospels and Sophia and all this stuff, I always, I did not ever feel I was channeling her or anything like that. I felt like my higher self was leading me synchronicities, my dreams. But in this circle, this was just at the beginning of October. We're praying at the end of the circle, and it is a Sophia circle. And I say, we're saying a prayer, and I'm like, I don't want to say a prayer. I actually just want to receive maybe some wisdom. I'm not going to put out, you know, what I want or whatever. I want to just receive something. And I receive something very divine. And so I'm sharing this with Neil, and I tell him what it is. And I say, I, I received, I am, oh wait, I belong to no one. Not no one like nobody, but no one person. I belong to no mm -hmm. one and I am home to all. And from there, he's like, you're making this a book. And I'm like, dude, I just received one sentence, two sentences, right? <laughs> Six words or whatever it is. Not a whole book. Every journey starts with the first step. Oh, <sighs> Molly, and what a first step. That is a beautiful message. Yeah. Isn't it? 
It just Mm -hmm. got me for days because that can mean so many things. Like home can be so many things. It could be the earth. It could be within yourself. You know, I I just, it could be mother earth. I, I think I felt the mother earth. I felt that feminine presence of mother earth and that. But then as I pondered on the message and then not belonging to no one, you know, I've said that before because I feel like people want to own you. I mean, even marriage, mm. what is that? I mean, no, I mean, it's a contract. Mm-hmm. That's true. I really it's do. an agreement. Feel, I mean, like, you know, this belonging, like, I don't belong to anyone, you know, and just like my children. Mm-hmm. So I've really practiced non-attachment over the years because I really do think it's like the root of all suffering, like some Buddha or Dalai Lama said, which was whoever said it was amazing. And so I, I just feel like I belong to no one, you know, and it just made me think of women, mm-hmm. really, you know, how we've been yeah. suppressed. It just, it was such a powerful meaning. It did, you know, it really was divine. And Neil thought so too. And I definitely was going to add it to the book that I was already writing. <laughs> wow. so, so what, I mean, tell us about this book. What yeah. What is it about? When is it coming out? Uh, how can we get a hold of it? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, it's like one of those things. I don't know if I felt like it was never going to end. I was like, because I kept mm. receiving stuff like this. And I'm like, well, it's mm-hmm. never going to end. So, so it actually came to me that it'll probably be a triple, like three books. As I'm at, as I see a triple goddess series. So, which is oh. the beginning of my journey started with the triple goddess, um, that whole synchronicity of the triple goddess. So, Sophia, it's desperately seeking Sophia. So it, but if you think about what I say, Sophia, it's wisdom. So desperately mm-hmm. seeking wisdom. And there's a big difference between wisdom and knowledge. I mean, you probably oh, understand yeah. that, you know, I mean, very smart people are also the stupid people often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, wisdom is also, I think, something that is divine and found within. Right. It's not something you'll mm-hmm. read in a book. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not asking anyone to find wisdom in my book, but I want them to seek, seek it within themselves. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to share my story of how I did. And through that story, I will be sharing like the history of the Gnostic Gospels, Sophia and all the other mm-hmm. divine feminines that have been buried, hidden. Yeah. Fascinating. I have to admit, I don't know a lot about Sophia other than the fact that it was the female version of God or yeah. whatever you want to call it. But other than that, I don't know much about it. So I'm really curious about this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't really hear about For it. For sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really funny yeah. that nobody knows much about Sophia, but at one point in Turkey where Christianity was once started in Turkey, mm-hmm. that was the, you know, the biggest church that Constantinople had ordered was called Hagia Sophia, which means holy wisdom. It's still there. But, you know, when I was watching the beginning, there was like um, some news guy that was like in Ukraine, right there in the middle of Ukraine. And he's like, I'm standing mm-hmm. in the back and here in front of the St. Sophia Cathedral. And like, who? St. <laughs> right. Sophia Cathedral. Like, what? Yeah. Who? You know, there is no St. Sophia. That actually, that I've actually dug really deep to find out if there actually literally was, but there wasn't. And so hmm. somebody knows something. We just been kept in the dark a while. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. I mean, we go down that go down that crazy rabbit hole of all the stuff that Constantinople did for Christianity and how he shaped yeah. it into what it is today based on fear and control. Uh, mm-hmm. you can understand why he made it a saint instead of an actual personification of female yeah. version of God. I don't know. But yeah. So I'm curious because you have talked to a lot of people and you've gained a lot of Sophia. A lot of wisdom yeah, along yeah. the path of uh, your show. Is there a an overlying message that keeps repeating itself while you when you're doing these shows? Is there something that we really need to get out there that that maybe we're not doing as good of a job of doing? Well, that's so interesting. I don't know if it's like that for you guys, but mine seem these messages seem to come almost. I don't know if it's like every year there's like a theme of it, or if it's. You know, I, I don't know if there's if it's in between these shifts, but there always is some sort of theme where I feel like everyone's bringing like a message. So that is interesting. Mm. And I feel like right now the message has been this is just totally random. So it's always changing. But like I've had a lot of manifestation, like, you mm-hmm. know, people wanting to talk about like raising mm-hmm. your vibration and like literally getting off the hamster wheel of 
following these conditional these conditions and these ancestral patterns. And when you do, you're just kind of free to believe that the world is limitless and mm. there's so much possibility. And I think that everything that we're shedding has been keeping us small. And almost like when you think about like the more we let go, like the brighter we get and the more we get mm-hmm. closer to like who we truly are. And I feel like that's like the evolution that's happening in each individual's life is going to help the planet. Mm. And so I think that that's kind of been the big message that's been this year for 2023 is that we need to move into our highest self so Mm -hmm. that this is like our responsibility to help the planet. Like if you want to help the planet, you got to do you. You have to. Yeah. And that's that's all you have to do. Mm. I've listened to your show also. I'm, I'm subscribed to your show. And a lot of times I hear, I've heard you say that when you're having a guest on your show, it it it's almost like you were researching something and all of a sudden, boop, here's a guest of along those, that, that topic, that kind of thing. Is that still happening or uh, is, is that still, is it? Constant. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay. I can't even tell you. <laughs> so crazy. It's so crazy. It, it, and I just feel like when your vibration is high like that, like mine's been lately really super high. I feel like you're mm-hmm. in that flow. And so you're like synchronicities and the dreams and things are lining up and everything just seems to be fitting together. And then you'll get sick or something and you can tell the difference that nothing's happening mm-hmm. right now. And then you rise up again. And so I think that for myself, Staying away from all of the negative stuff and, and just really being in my zone with podcasting has really kept me sane, <laughs> truly. Yeah. yeah, with all the negativity yeah. out there. Uh huh. It is hard to deal with the negativity, but we did have one guest that really kind of, what she said just kind of hit me. She was talking about how, it, not that it's good to see that. I mean, my interpretation is that it is kind of good to see all this negativity because her take on that was, this is showing you who and where you need to send the love to. And, mm-hmm. and when you see all this negativity, that should be an impetus for you to be kinder in your regular life. You know, be complimentary of people, be more loving. So now I kind of use it that way. I'm like, okay, all this is going on. I need to really, I need to be a really good person so that hopefully that will kind of spread through. So it can, yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways you can kind of take that or, yeah. you know, and sometimes you, you do, you just got to shut it off because it's so overwhelming, mm-hmm. but I'm trying it, I feel like this is kind of the world we're living in right now. So I'm trying to, in my way, sort of take it a little bit different. Yeah. I don't know if it makes mm. a difference. We'll see. Yeah. I'm looking at everything different. I don't want to look at anything the same anymore. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we <laughs> right. have Thanksgiving and Christmas and all these things and I'm just like. We're so just in the consumerism of all of it. and But you know what? When people start saying, I'm not going to celebrate that anymore. I'm like, but the thing is, is that have you really been celebrating like pilgrims and, and the natives? Or have you just been getting together with your family? Because I mean, I know right. that mm-hmm. the holidays really are just family for, for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, I, I definitely educate my kids. You know, I was driving my son to play football last thanksgiving that's like their tradition they go back to high school and they all meet together and play football together and he goes to cherokee trail high school <laughs> so on the way there i'm like <laughs> just know that when you're running around that field on cherokee trail he's like <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> That is true. You know, you have you have this very kind of wonderful energy about you and this wisdom and this soulfulness and you know you talked again about you know Catholic out- upbringing and, and all of this, I want to know what was it like, because now you're talking about the downloads and the message that you're getting, and they're very impactful. Mm-hmm. What was it like the first time that you realized you were getting like a message or a download? I mean, how did, how did that come across and how did you accept it? Mm-hmm. I think that the very first time I had an experience was shocking because I wasn't really sure what was happening. <laughs> I was out mm-hmm. in my garage and I think I was smoking. And my best friend had just died. One of my best friends. I knew her since she was 12. And I was so sad. I was super sad. She had just died like the day before. And all of a sudden, I hear my name. But I hear my real name. So my real name is Shannon. And I hear Shannon. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was like, well, I probably just said that to myself. 
I was like, did I just say that to myself? And then I hear, no, Shannon. And I'm, now I'm hearing her voice. And I'm like, am I talking to myself, you know, in my in my head? This is all <laughs> happening in my head. And she like told me all of these things, like that she could visit me in my dreams and that she needed to go be with her babies. She had just had um, twins 11 days before she died. Oh my goodness. And she also oh. had a child that was Kensley's age at the time, I think like three, two or three. And she had a 19 year old too. That happened. And I remember it was, the time was weird. Like, mm -hmm. like I remember there was so much we talked about, but I was only in, I, like my cigarette was still going. <laughs> like, you know, time was mm -hmm. weird. And so right. I went inside and I remember thinking, did I just have this? So I, I knew this lady who was, um, I like it. it was one of the baseball moms or something. She actually still is. And I called her and I told her my experience. And she's like, that's exactly what happens when I receive. And I was like, really? Like, hmm. I had no idea. And then I was scared because I was like, am I going to help? Right. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was scared. I didn't know if I should be playing with that. You know, I thought, yeah. mm. not that I ever didn't ever believe that people could do it. I just didn't know that I mm. could do it. And I wasn't sure if I should be doing that. And then I had people tell me stuff like, oh, it's because you're meditating. And <laughs> you're opening yourself up to that. And so it just, it took a long time for me to shed the conditions and for me truly to step into yeah. being okay with that. And and mm -hmm. I do see a lot. Of, I, I would say that my strongest way that I receive, like my Claire, is not audio, like Claire audience. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I'm more clairvoyant. I see things mm -hmm. a lot more. So, really, I, I would I would say I see visual and also physical. So when you see things, like what kind of things do you see? Like ghosts, or do you see uh, future events? Do you see mm -hmm. visions? What do you get? All of it. So yes, I do. We all, my whole house sees stuff. All my girls, especially, we all say things, mm -hmm. and we all see them at the same time, which is kind of kind of validating. But every yeah. time I yeah. do sessions or meditation, they're very, very vivid. Or I've had past life regressions. We're talking like movies, like very clear in color HD. Mm -hmm. I see very easily, and I think I always have. I've had a great imagination. I just didn't know that imagination actually is is divine in itself <laughs> you can mm -hmm. actually close right. your eyes and think about a memory that's you know when you're thinking back at a memory seeing that's visual <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and right. so i do these one session so my reiki kind of evolved but when i'm doing reiki i usually want to get my clients down to like a theta brain wave or as, as close as theta as i can but in between awake and asleep in a place where they're only taking in and they're not putting out thoughts and stuff like they're only absorbing because this is where mm -hmm. they're able to receive you know whatever kind of healing better and so I will walk them through whatever I see and so I I never ever have like scripted meditations so I I guess you want to say channel I don't really call it channeling but I just that's how I do all my meditations mm -hmm. I'm seeing their sacred space and what I noticed was after like hundreds and clients, you know, seeing the same clients hundreds of times, well, not hundreds of times, but several times, I noticed that I was bringing them back to the same space and it was really only unique to them. So Karen, if I went with you to this park on that chair, next time I saw you, I started realizing that I was always bringing you there, but that I wouldn't do that with Will. I would bring him to another place. And of course, I didn't notice this for like a year or so. It was remarkable. Mm -hmm. But then I started wow. to do the art so I could show them exactly what I'm seeing. And many, most of the times is what they're seeing because we're, you know, we're in the same space. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, so the place that you took them to, is that a place that they, that they envisioned themselves or they knew before or sometimes. all the above? Yeah, sometimes. Like, it's oh. kind of interesting, though. I mean, like, I'll bring someone to a beach and that's like totally, you know, what they were seeing or where, you know, where they have memories from when I'm bringing this other person, you know, to a mountain or, you know, to a cabin or wherever that it usually is unique to them. It's very interesting. I couldn't make this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's wonderful though. It's wonderful. Weird. Yeah. So weird. Like I'm uber, uber jealous, so, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> you guys should uh, get a session one day. I would more than love to bring you into that space. 
I think we're going to take you up on it. You should. Uh, yeah, it'd be <laughs> my you. gift. I would love to because I love to do it because it's oh. just so amazing just to bring you into like this space and just to know that this is your space. Like I haven't been here before. Like yesterday I had a client. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything we did, I've never done before with anybody. And that's how it always is. Isn't that weird? I might be a little worried about what place you go to with so, I know. He I'm has a past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people are more galactic than others. I mean, it's just very interesting. Speaking of that, what has been the most like fall on your face, shocking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, shocking thing that you've learned throughout the course of doing the podcast? Hmm. Most shocking thing. I would say that it probably is ancient text. I mean, I know that sounds silly, but it's actually not because I think the ancient text actually proves that we have root races that are galactic (laughs) and that, Mm -hmm. you know, angels are aliens. That's my belief. I think that there's a lot of evidence in this and, and I would love to go head to head with anyone who would like to challenge me on it. (laughs) There have been discoveries or theories or whatever you want to call it about the potential, the possibility that there have been multiple extinction events for humankind. Like we are not the first time around this rodeo, right? There, there, there's been three, four, five times that humanity has risen and died mm-hmm. because we um, blew each other away or, or just evolved out of ourselves into who we are now. Mm-hmm. But the, all those relics and all those fossils and all those things are are lost to us. Yeah. So there's uh, there's a school of thought that says that originally, back in millennia ago, it, we all actually were populated on this planet from aliens. So inevitably, we are, could all consider ourselves to be star seeds. Yeah. I'm sure you have had many conversations with people who claim to be star seeds and who are from uh-huh. galactic origins. But in your estimation, are we all aliens? You know, I do wonder if there was some sort of human or Earth breed, <laughs> I'm calling breeds, Earth lineage. Um, <laughs> but I think that if there was, they were quickly bred with, you know, so there might, I, I don't, I don't know for sure on that one. However, I definitely think that when you're talking about like anything that has any kind of like higher intelligence, or had the capability to make pyramids and stuff like that probably wasn't the ones that were here that were the human ones. So they may have been more like cavemen. I don't know. But I right, do think right. there was a, you know, a, an intelligent, you know, group of beings that came here. There, I mean, it literally is in many books. And, you know, now, you know, if you read some of the Sumerian texts, I mean, they align with the Bible, which actually gives some credit to the Bible itself so Mm -hmm. um some of the stories i mean you know look at um so i think it was inky's wife's name was nin nin two i mean nin means life two means rib (laughs) Mm. um and she was like the first to give life you know here on earth there's the stories of the flood but you know what i've been studying and following lately has been those polar shift that's on the rise and they say Mm -hmm. that it could be because of a pole of this planet X or Nibiru planet that's also mentioned in the Sumerian text, which they say that is we're on a cycle with this. And so this would be why the deluge or the destruction of the earth was happening. And it happens in a cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. And the solar flares (laughs) are part of that. And really, I follow mm. them every day. I follow suspicious, uh, suspicious observers. Oh, my God. He's great. And, you know, no one's looking at this kind of stuff, but yet they know what the moon is every night. And it's like, mm. No one's worrying about the sun. <laughs> Which, right. yeah. Is, is what gives us light, right? Yeah. It's, it's the most important well, body uh, in our skies. Yeah, but it's scarier. I agree. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Like, you oh, should pay attention. God. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Gosh. Well, I love talking to you, Shanna. You've got an incredible energy, and almost every guest that you have on your show says the same thing. And you do. You do. You have this wonderful, soothing energy about you that is just so welcoming. If someone wanted to reach out to you, whether it's for an intuitive session or Reiki healing, or even if it's just to listen to your show, what's the best way for someone to do that? 
senseofsoulpodcast.com. Okay. It's all there. We're going to add that link to our show notes. So if you want to just go to skepticmetaphysician.com, go to Shanna's episode page, you will see the link laid in there along with her social media links so you can get connected in every way possible. Shanna, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for being so wonderful. Thank you for being part of the Ethereal Network. And thank you, most importantly, for being our friend. Thank you. I totally feel like you all are my friends. And thanks so much for having me and for inviting me to be a part of Ethereal Network, my love. Well, it's been a pleasure. And a huge thank you to you. We know that there are tons of options out there. And having you decide to come along on our journey of discovery with us is an absolute honor for us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing the message we're sharing on the show, do them and us a favor and share the show with them. It will help get the word out about us, and it might just change someone's life for the better. Well, that's all for now, but we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care. Thank you.